Well, AEW Rampage, as you know, went the head-to-head with SmackDown with one hour show, but not to mention a free one hour show on YouTube. It's very interesting how things have been turning out, but we'll find out afterwards what's going to take place. However, we know the amazing matches that took place on both hours. Our, on the YouTube side, we are, we're happy to see Brian Danielson taking on the King Minoru Suzuki. And then we got, of course, on the actual Rampage show during television time, CM Punk versus Matt Seidel, Ruby Soho versus The Bunny, and of course the main event, the Inner Circle, Sammy Guevara, Jake Hager, and Chris Jericho taking on former UFC fighter Junior Dos Santos, along with Men of the Year, Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page, along with Lambert and Masavald, and all the other stuff. Also, we got 205 Live with three matches that took place. Not to mention, I'm going to review a past event by Dragon Gate, Memorial Gate 2021 in Wakayama. So, let's get started with another episode of the Leaded Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone, all things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay right here. So, let's go with the Rampage, AEW Rampage, as you know, we had two hours of it, one on YouTube, and the other one on television. Now, let's go with the buy-in, which is one of the most interesting shows. We have... Tay Conti along with Anna Jay taking on uh, Santana Garrett. Um, this is the first time Santana Garrett makes her debut on Rampage. As you know, she made an appearance on AEW Dark not too long ago in a match against, uh, what's her name, Diamante. But I have to say it was a pretty good match. But however, uh, they um, I was not too much pumped on this one. But uh, Tay Conti won the match with an amazing victory on this one. Then we got... The much interesting match, Lee Moriarty taking on Bobby Fish. Now, why is that? As you know, they both have like some sort of different styles. You know, Bobby Fish's background with kickboxing or MMA helps them. And of course, they put a lot of more of the catch wrestling style, which is something unique, you know, you normally don't see. Normally, I see guys like Drew Gulag, Matt, um, Matt Riddle, um, who can have put Chris Dickinson and a few others, but it was a pretty good match. But however, Bobby Fish was the better man and much of the veteran. As you know, he is part now of the AEW roster and also Lee Moriarty. Now, our main event was, of course, Minoru Suzuki versus the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. I have to say, this match was great. Now, Brian Danielson did mention on Twitter that he has come across. Suzuki before and he lost the match, but he did say he remember how he beat the shit out of him. That is one of those things that kind of falls into fruition. I think this is one of those matches that many fans are saying the possibilities that AEW can put. You see, you don't get dream matches in WWE, but outside of it, with AEW and other promotions, you definitely can see it. And I think it was one of the best ones I've seen. And of course, it was Brian Anderson with that, that knee right in the face of him and putting him out for the one, two, three. Now, the next match we have is starting of the of Rampage on television. We have CM Punk taking on Matt Seidel. Now, this is, the, this is the first time in 10 years these guys have seen each other, but it's not the first time prior before that. They have met before me in the pendant scenes, and it kind of was really great. However, I did enjoy how... Um, Matt, uh, like we all know that CM Punk is athletic. I think they both had a lot of cardio that they put in because you know how it is. Like 
CM Punk is willing to teach the younger generation or people who are like not that no no longer young, but they're still got in their prime. And I think it showed a lot of character with Punk. And the same thing with Matt Seidel. But however, it was Punk to put him to sleep and put him on the one, two, three, and that was it. Now, as you know, the Dark Order are back together. They're happy that Hangman Page is back and he has a shot of the AEW world title at full gear. However, they're self-aware that they, Kenny will do whatever it takes to win. And we all know who be, is backing him up. And that is the super click. Adam Cole and the Young Bucks. So, Silver and Rellos and Eno, Evil Uno came up with a plan. They issued a challenge against the super click. So, basically, is this going to take place in full gear? Well, we don't know. We're yet to find out what's going on. Because as much as the story is being built up, as you know... Hammett, Kenny Omega hasn't acknowledged yet that he has to face Adam Page and they are trying to build something up. But we'll see what happens then. Our next match is Ruby Soho and the Bunny. Now this has implications for the TBS title that's been announced a week prior before that. As you know, the women's division will have a secondary uh, title to TBS. Ruby Soho and the Bunny are most likely to be in there. But I have to say this match was pretty good. It showed how Ruby Soho is determined to win. And so the same thing with the Bunny. But it was Ruby Soho that took the victory on this one. Allowing to pin her. But however, it didn't end it that way for her. She was viciously attacked by the by Penelope Ford. And then knocked her out with the brass knucks. Now, there is still no indication yet. We will find out what the brackets are for the TBS title. But we've got to wait and see what's going to go from there. Now our main event is the Inner Circle versus uh, Sammy Guevara, Jake Hager, and Chris Jericho taking on Junior Dos Santos, Men of the Year, Sky, and Paige. This feud has been instigated because, of course, Lambert has been outspoken about how he believed that pro wrestling are being fed with lies by a bunch of idiots and all this other stuff. And Jericho wants to shut him up. Now, this is the debut of Junior Dos Santos as a wrestler. And I had to say he did pretty good. And I think many fans were expecting that Dos Santos will be face-to-face -face with none other than Jake Hager. Now, why is that important? It's because, as you know, Jake Hager is currently undefeated in MMA. It's still no indication if when will he have another match. I wouldn't be surprised if... They're going to have an MMA match in AEW. It wouldn't be the first time. We saw that with Wardlow. But the match was pretty good. And not to mention a moment where Sammy Guevara had a, a really good spot. And of course Hager put Dos Santos through a table. Now when Jericho had everything under control. The other members of the American Top Team. Paige Van Zandt showed up and distracted the referee. While George Mazavald showed up and knee Jericho right in the face. Allowing for Scorpio Sky to pick up the victory. But the other members of American Top Team showed up and attacked them, beating them down much as possible until Santana and Ortiz showed up. Now the Inner Circle are in full force. So this is far from over for the Inner Circle to deal with Lambert and the rest of the American Top Team. And not to mention, everybody booed them. But I have to say, AEW Rampage was a pretty good show. I think it was really awesome. I was looking forward to both on the YouTube channel and on television. So we'll see what happens the following week and also on Dynamite. Okay, so we got 205 Live with three matches that took place. The first one is Jeet Rama. If you guys never heard, ever seen him, he was that guy from Hindu who participated in that spectacular show not too long ago, taking on Tian Shah's. Bo uh, Boa along with Mi Yang. I have to say this is one of those matches where it showed how Boa is now adapted. Now keep in mind Xia Li is no longer in NXT so that means Boa is now the guy running the front side but it was a pretty good match to watch because it showed Boa wants to adapt more be that guy that wants to how do I put it uh, show how dominant he can be and I think Jeet Rama was the latest example. And of course, that kick right in the head. Ooh, that was good. So, Boa picked up the victory on that. And I know for a fact, Mian is satisfied. Now, our next match is a tag team. We got, of course, Bro 
Brooks Jensen and Josh Briggs taking on Regan Scott and Taylor Garland. Now, I want to confess, I'm not too pumped on this one, but as you can tell, these guys are more like those um, country boys that want to fight. That's exactly what happened. And of course, the I don't remember who they powerbombed, but it was a good match. It just ended in that way with the powerbomb. Now, our main event, I have to say, was a really good one for me because it showed how Roderick Strong, who is now the Cruiserweight Champion, but now he has to face someone who is a non-Cruiserweight competitor. He has to put himself to the test against a much larger individual, and that individual is none other than Odyssey Jones. And I think it showed how Roderick Strong is now becoming a much better individual since he left, since the disbandment of the Undisputed Era, and now his involvement with Malcolm Bivens and Diamond Mine. And I was impressed how Roderick Strong took out Odyssey Jones. So basically, right now, Roderick Strong is showing what he can do even now that he is away from his past and focusing on the future. And it was him who won, won the match when he pinned him. But the real question is, who is going to be the one to take him out? That's only time will tell. But we'll wait and see when that day comes. Okay, the last thing I'm going to review is a past event by Dragon Gate. This one is called Memorial Gate 2021 in Wakayama. It took place on the 27th of March. Now, I'm a bit behind on this one, but there are some shows that I'm unable to see down the line, but I will put those up as soon as I will watch those as soon as possible to catch up with everything that took place. The first match is a eight-man tag team match. We got, of course, the Natural Vibes taking on Consistent of UT, Genki, Origuchi, Suzumu, y uh, Yokozuka, and KZ taking on Hoho Loon, Punch Tominaga, Sashihoko Boy, and Guruku Mask. Now, as you know, there was a great moment in the beginning where, of course, uh, what's his name? Shazizu uh, Hoko Boy was wasting time doing his little whatever, but it was a great moment. But however, I think. In this match, ever since Natural Vibes has reformed, are now becoming better and better since they recruited UT to be part of their group. And I think it showed that he is meant to be part of this faction. Uh, if you guys re remember or not, he, his previous faction was uh, Travel Vanguard, but majority of the core members are gone and some are now in the other factions. But seeing UT grown in Natural Vibes, I think it was a perfect fit. I think he's a good dancer, you know, when he opens up, when they open up the show with the their match with them dancing. So, it was good. Now, our next match is we got Kagetora, Bukatimo Dragon, and Ultimo Dragon taking on R.E.D., <coughs> B.B. Hulk, Diamante, and Kaito Ishida. Now, keep in mind, Diamante wanted to challenge Bukatimo for his mask, a mask versus mask rules. So basically, he wants to demask him, but however, this whole match went out like crazy. Basically, Bokutimo and Diamante are at each other's throat. They even swapped matches with the mask because they removed them off. But however, it ended in disqualification by Bokutimo, allowing for R.E.D. to win. Now, Bokutimo apologized for what he did from what I can tell of expressions. But however, he knows that he's pissed that he has to deal with Diamante, who is determined to unmask him. That has been his motive. But we'll see what happens then. Our next match we have is Ben K from High End taking on R.E.D. member Hip Hop Kikuda. Uh, I have to say he is one of the most younger wrestlers who, in fact, uh, came from the 2020 class and sided with uh, R.E.D. He's shown that he is now more deadlier than he ever was before you know especially with a guy who's determined to become just like Esby Kento he and Esby Kento were part of the same class he wants to grow more and I was surprised that it was a big upset when he took out um, Ben K. Ben K is a veteran he knows exactly what to do but Hip Hop Kikuda took, out, uh, took him out real good with a pinfall 
Now, this next match is a three-way time difference tornado tag team. Now, I can't tell you who wins who because it was confusing, but I can tell you who was involved. We had three teams involved. We have REDs consistent of SB Kento, Kai, and Ata versus Masquerade, uh, Masquerades, Jason Lee, Minoru Koda, and La Estrella versus High End, Dragon Kid, Yamato, and Kosuke Okuda. Now, keep in mind, this rivalry between members of, of R.A.D. consistent of SB Kento and Kai, they have a deep grudge against members of High End, uh, Dragon Kid, and Yamato. But basically, the match was focused on trying to defeat each other. So basically, that's what it took place. But it was Kai who was able to pick up the victory for his team by pinning one of the team members in order to each of the team members to win. However, the feud will take place at Dead or Alive. And now, I haven't seen that one yet, but I really am curious to see what took place. Now, the next match is for the Open the Twin Gate Championship. Now, those who are new are asking yourselves, what is the Twin Gates? Twin Gates is a... Is is the standard tag team titles basically we have the challengers uh yasushi kanda and kenichiro airi taking on takashi yoshida and masaaki mochizuku now these guys have won in some sort of number one contendership taking on uh, yoshida and machizuki and it was a pretty good match i would have assumed that this was going to end in of course in yoshida and Ma mochizuki's favor reason is is that Moshizuki is a veteran. Yoshida, who is, you know, determined to strike on his own since he kicked out, was kicked out by R.E.D. But he's progressing a lot, and it was Yoshida that picked up the victory for his team. Now, our main event is the Open the Dream Gate Championship. Those who don't know, who are new to the channel, they're saying, what is the Dream Gate Championship? Well, it's the top title. It's more of the world heavyweight title. Uh, this particular title is where... The challenger is given a key, and they, if they able to win the title, they key, all the keys that were trapped that are, were attached to the belt will be removed and start over. Now, Kazuma Sakamoto challenged Shun Skywalker for this match. Reason is, R.A.D. are determined to take back this title where it rightfully belongs, which is back to R.A.D. They haven't forgotten. R.A.D. will never forget how Ata lost the title to Shun Skywalker. A guy they thought they were able to beat to make them suffer during the match. So it looks like one of them are stepping up one at a time. You know, we already saw that with Kaito Ishida where he thought he could beat him. But this time, it's because of their history, they hated each other. So it was a pretty good match. It was Sean Skywalker to put him out in some sort of a powerbomb, allowing himself to break the title. But however, it did not end right there. Hip Hop Kikuda declared himself as the next challenger. Now, Kikuda is a bit more younger than Shun Skywalker. But, does he have what it takes to see? Well, we we'll don't know. I don't know if I have the video to see that one. But if he did, I'm definitely going to see it. And I think that's pretty much it what I got right now to review for all of you. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode with just me doing three reviews. Um, I, I was hope to put a fourth one, but no. I didn't have time due to some other commitments I had to do. Uh, for the next episode, I got Got to Moves uh, Choco Pro 164, which is going to be good. Uh, there's still no indication about the four way number one contendership with no time limit. It's still up in the air. Hopefully, we'll get more information on that. And of course, don't forget, we got AEW Dynamite, which is going to be good to watch. And of course, we got New Japan Strong with Antum Attack, which some matches we haven't seen yet. Now, don't forget that I will put in another review. This one is from the recent event back on the 13th by Seedling. This is back in Cork and Hall, which I'm very excited to check it out. So, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. And have a nice day. Bang.